So what does it mean to be a human being? You see, human beings are the most creative, the most adaptable, and the most complex beings that exist in the known universe. Unless some aliens bust through that door, but I don't think that's happening anytime soon, hopefully. So, we are creatures of limitless potential. But not all of us explore and are able to tap into that potential. Why is that? You see, in my seven years of experience in the healthcare industry, I've identified four broad categories, which is mindset, the relationships we have, nutrition, and movement. These four fundamentals are like the wheels of a car. And just like you can't drive a four-wheel car on three wheels, you can't expect to fulfill your potential as a human being if these four elements of your life aren't in check. How do I know that? Well, I've been chasing milestones all my life. But, funnily enough, Mr. India wasn't really a mind, milestone for me. Mr. India was a surprise journey. And I was able to get through it and actually win it only because I was ready with all four of those elements. So if you want to chase one milestone to the next, these four elements will keep you prepared for life. So let's move on to the first element, and that's your mindset. So the modern human, modern anatomical human, has been around for roughly two million years. And for two million years, we've existed with fear. The world around us has always been difficult, tragic. Saber-toothed tigers could come in from anywhere. There could be fast, famines, you have to go long times without food. And fear is one thing that always helped us. It helped us go faster than we could, survive, be aware of our surroundings. But today's world is a lot different. It's a lot more comfortable, maybe a little soft. And because of that, a lot of people aren't able to de deal with fear. We've forgotten how to be fearful and how to control it. Well, the ancient culture of Sparta and also, in today's world, the Navy SEALs constantly put themselves through difficult situations in order to face these feelings of fear and become comfortable with it. In fact, today, one of my favorite authors, Tim Ferriss, developed this technique called the Comfort Zone Challenge. All right? How this works is, you basically step into a room with people. You could do this at a Starbucks, in case you didn't realize I'm going to be doing this right now. So you step into a room with full, room full of people where people are looking at you and you put yourself in an uncomfortable situation. Right then and there, feelings of fear, fear will start to creep in. Let me demonstrate. So, this is probably the last thing that you were expecting me to do, which is why I'm doing it. Because if I lay down on the floor right now, right, a lot of people are going to be thinking, probably that's what my mind tells me that, oh my god, what is this guy doing? This is a TED talk. You're not supposed to be laying down on the floor. Is he not taking this seriously? In fact, I might lose a lot of people in the audience. But that's all right. These are just feelings of fear. This is just the talk going on in my mind, right? The reality is very different. In fact, some of you here might actually appreciate that. Some of you here might actually think that's kind of cool. So that would give me a sense of confidence. And that would allow me to develop new relationships with new people. How do I know that? I've done that. Believe it or not, I've gone to a Starbucks cafe, laid down on the floor, and I actually made new friends. Speaking of friends, let's go to the next phase or the next element, which is relationships. So humans, like I said, have been around for roughly 2 million years. And for 2 million years, we've been tribal creatures. We've existed in groups. We've been codependent. Today's Western movement of being independent is great. I appreciate what they're, where they're coming from. But that's led us to feel maybe a little lonely. And I'm sure some people out there listening to this probably feel that way. In fact, social media was designed to bring us closer. Yet, somehow, it just makes us more and more lonely. Why is that? It's because we lack that real connection with people. We need that. We've had that for two million years. And all of a sudden, we're expected to just be independent and alone. So, now that we know that's critical, how do you develop a new relationship? There's one simple technique to do this. Just treat other people 
the way you would want to be treated. How does that work? So if you meet somebody new and this person makes a mistake, would you go to them and shout at them? Probably. But what if you were in their shoes? What if your boss comes to you and he's like, oh my god, Varane, why do you keep making mistakes? What's going on with you? If he's rude to me, would I like that? Probably not. So why do we speak that way to other people? To our parents, to our siblings, to our loved ones. So in order to, in order to establish long relationships, successful relationships, learn to treat other people the way you would want to be treated. And all of that's great, right? External world is great, but I think we're missing one more crucial element of relationships, and that's the relationship that we have with the most important person in your life, and that's yourself. The way we speak to ourselves these days is pretty negative. Like, if I were to make a mistake, like my example was right now, if I were to make a mistake, I would probably think, oh my god, Varane, again. You made a mistake again, you just can't improve. What is all of this about? Let's try a quick exercise. I want you to think of a person who could be, who's probably the most important person in your life. This could be a sibling, it could be your parent, it could be your loved one, spouse, girlfriend, boyfriend, friend, whatever, you, whatever, whoever is important to you. For me, I personally try to think of my future child. So if this future child makes a mistake, how would you speak to them? Would you shout at them? Tell them, oh my god, why do you keep making mistakes? Probably not, right? You would use a more constructive sort of speech with them. So why then are we so mean to ourselves? Why are we so negative with ourselves? So we need to learn to really focus on how we speak to ourselves. We need to focus on the kind of words we use with ourselves. Let me give you another example. Now, if this child of mine, for whatever reason, is suffering from a health condition, right? Would I go and give this child a box of donuts? Probably not. If I know that's bad for them, then why do we go and eat these donuts? Why do we keep putting things into our body that aren't good for us? You need to really monitor your relationship with yourself. And that brings me to my third point, nutrition. So, like I said, human beings, we've been around for two million years. And for two million years, we've been hunter-gatherers, right? We used to go out in the wild, we used to hunt, forage for food. This would take probably hours, days, sometimes even weeks. In fact, we would go a lot of times without food for the longest time. But you know what? Human beings survive through that. These are our ancestors. And today's world, it's a little different. It's a world of overconsumption. Now, they say you are what you eat. So if I eat a donut tomorrow, does that mean I turn into a donut? Probably not, right? But if I ate a donut every day for the rest of my life, in one year, I'm pretty sure I'm going to look like one, right? You are what you eat. So you've got to be very careful with what you put into your body because every single cell of your body is made up of the food you've eaten. Really think about that. So like I said, human beings have been hunter-gatherers, right? We've gone outside, we've stalked our prey, we've foraged for food, and we've all obviously spent a lot of time during meals. Today we aren't able to do that, and that's only because consumerism has forced us to think that we need to eat six meals a day. We need to eat every hour, because that keeps your metabolism up. But that's clearly not working out for most people. So if there's one tip that I could give you, in terms of nutrition, that could change your life, and it certainly changed mine, it's intermittent fasting. You've probably heard of it, but let me give you a brief about it. The way intermittent fasting works is, you basically go a certain amount of time without food, you eat again, and then you stop eating again. It's just that simple. What I personally do is called 16A. So every single day, I'll eat food from maybe 12 p.m. till 8 p.m., eight hours, and then I just won't eat till the next day. It's as simple as that. You could do 16 hours, 14, 12, whatever you're comfortable with. Build up to it. What this does is, when you aren't eating continuously, your body actually has a chance to use the fuel that you're storing. It has a chance to rebuild some of that tissue. 
it has a chance to recover and heal. Why? Because that's how we've survived for two million years. We've been hunter-gatherers. Now, I'm not saying let's go back to being hunter-gatherers because that's really not practical. But that's going to bring me to my fourth point, and that's movement. Hunter-gatherers were out in the fields, running, killing saber-toothed tigers, walking 40 kilometers a day. How many of us are actually doing that today? I don't think there's one person I know who does that. But I do, do know a lot of people who get really happy when their smartwatch shows 10,000 steps, right? That's a measure of health for us today. And I understand they're coming from a good space. But understand, your body is designed to do incredible things. Yet, we don't really do that anymore. We don't put ourselves out there. And if I could speak to 100 people in this audience, most of you guys are going to tell me that it's because you don't have time. Right? We're a time crunch society. And that's OK, because modern science has a solution for that. So my number one tip for fitness, for those people who aren't good with time, who are crunched for time, is called HIIT, high intensity interval training. How this works is you basically go a short interval of time where you're doing a high intensity movement. You take a break for another short interval, exercise again, and break, and exercise and break for 10 minutes, 15, 20. If you can get 20 minutes a day for the next one year, I promise you, you will see incredible changes in your body. And if you don't, you come back to me, we'll figure something else out for you. All right? <laughs>